to Barren Mountain. Well, the base of Barren Mountain, which is uh, Barren Mountain itself uh, is part of the AT. But this, whoa, yeah, that's nasty. This uh, trail that gets, joins up with the AT is almost always covered in mud like this. It's not much of a trail and it could really benefit from some, uh, well, maintenance is the wrong word. It could, uh, some, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, some uh, boardwalks or uh, boardwalks really. Oh, hey, there's a little side trail I completely missed. Anyway, it's only uh, nasty like this for not 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 a not a lot. I, though I can't quantify a lot right now. But as um, soon as we get a little bit of elevation, things improve. Yeah, let me take this back over here. There we go. Well, maybe there we go. All right, here we go. But yeah. Yeah, there is just not a lot of, uh, not a lot of places to step where you don't risk sinking in slime and sludge. So let's we'll kind of bounce our way through this as best we can and hope I find a place to clean off my boots later. All right, so we're through, we're through most of that slime, that sludge, those, well, I guess it used to be a road or a logging road at one point, but it is really just a mud pit for now, and it has been for, for years, maybe decades. But we're past that. We've started our ascent. And, and I think a mile, maybe not a whole mile, but maybe more, we will uh, join up with the AT itself. And one of the, one of the things about Barron and the trail is that yeah, out of the gate, it's pretty, pretty much up, up, up. But after a couple of miles of that, about the time you hit the slide and the ledges, things get a lot more gradual uh, until you reach the summit just about. So we'll just keep trudging upward until we hit that, uh, until we hit the ledges and slide and all of that. where that uh, trail that connects to the AT from the base of Barron meets the AT right here. And it might be hard to make out, but behind me on that tree is a white blaze. We've also got this little carn here just to at least grab some attention. But from here, we're gonna continue heading east and up. I don't know that I mentioned it, but 
this part of the AT is a portion of the 100 mile wilderness which according to most is the most difficult section of the AT typically supply roads are few and far between although there are a couple of logging roads that can be used as drops if if necessary but uh, past where we, I intend to go today you get into uh, Fourth Mountain and the Chairbacks and a lot of that is uh, up and down and up and down so you may net roughly I don't know a couple hundred feet of elevation change but you will have gained and lost thousands of vertical yards vertical feet vertical units of measure whatever uh, before then and uh, a couple of years back I was coming uh, westbound west and south on part of the hundred and uh, got to enjoy those up and downs and up and downs and they're no joke I granted I'm not in like through hiking shape I never have been I sincerely doubt that I will be uh, anyway <laughs> but uh, by the time I got back to Barron my knees were shot and uh, yeah I mean it was just going to be a couple of days overnighting it turned into zero days overnighting and one long and sore day after that most days I'd probably be uh, a little embarrassed uh, that I need to take a quick little break right here not a fast day that's for sure even though you never technically get above the timberline on Barron at the peak there uh, is the what they call the structure of an old fire watchtower. Uh, the cab has long since uh, fallen apart. It was there uh, when I was in high school. I remember coming up, taking a nap up there on a windy day in the fall. It's great, uh, but that's been gone for decades. And the uh, structure, the steel uh, scaffold, the uh, tower, I guess that uh, the cab sat on is still up there, or at least it was the last time I was up here, which was, well, probably decades ago also, or a decade, give or take. Uh, anyway, uh, from the top of that, which you can climb, it's probably not the safest thing to climb, but it's, it's definitely uh, climbable. You can get a good uh, 360 view of everything, you know, from Lake Onawa and Borestone to uh, the Long Pond in the north and a couple of mountains out that way. I forget the names of them off the top of my head. One of the great things about hiking these mountains in Maine is that you can almost always find blueberries about this time of year. It's about uh, early August and these bushes are just just crawling with them. I don't know how well they'll come out on the camera here but and the good thing is you can pick a handful or two and just shove them down your throat and be none the worse for it, probably better for it. Now, obviously, you need to know what uh, berries you're dealing with. Uh, just because they're blue and shaped like berries doesn't automatically make them blueberries, so be uh, smart about uh, picking stuff in the wild and putting it in your mouth. Right here that leads to the barren slide 
But as you can see, yeah, get us in closer here. Trail is closed. The reason it's closed is because there are peregrine falcons breeding in the area, as uh, you can see on this sign here. And that's unfortunate uh, that we don't get to go out and take a, take a look at that slide because you, you get some pretty great views across Bodfish Valley into Lake Onawa and across to Borstone from there. And it's just a, a really neat place to explore, to kind of scramble over. And uh, there's some, well, not true caves, but some places where rocks have lodged together to form overhangs and uh, dark places where the sun can't quite reach. So they feel like caves, but um, I guess not caverns is the, the term. But obviously we can't go in there and I'm not going to risk disturbing any peregrines. Um, I think it's been like that for a few years now, so I don't know how long they are prone to use that area for nesting. Um, I know, shoot, probably 30-ish years ago, across the valley on Borstone, they had some uh, peregrine uh, rehabilitation reintroduction, I'm not sure exactly, but they had program, a program over there for um, peregrine breeding and the like. And so one of the trails over there was closed off for quite some time. So it makes me wonder if some of the peregrines that are now here, just on the other side of a fairly narrow valley, might have some uh, relationship with those peregrines from, you know, 30 years ago. Interesting thing to think about, I'm not sure either way. But uh, anyway, we should be through the, the worst of the uh, elevation gradient. And while it's still generally going to be up from here, it should be less punishingly so. So, Hopefully we'll pick up some speed and get to the summit in uh, short order. And then we'll be able to uh, move on toward Cloud Pond. All right. It's only been maybe 50 to 100 feet since the last time I stopped and paused, but I figured it was worth coming out just to uh, give you a glimpse of this view. Not the one behind me, and certainly not me. Now up there, I don't know if you can make it out in, on camera, but on that peak, that is Barron Summit, there is the structure of the fire tower. And then as we kind of pan over here, you can see Lake Onawa below us. Across the valley, you can see Borstone. Now the sky is, has been very hazy today, almost, uh, a smoke-like smell to it and I'm not sure if it's from wildfires or something else entirely but it's typically not as hazy up here and it's certainly not weather it's not clouds or typical clouds not rain clouds it certainly doesn't have that feel to it but anyway this this view is as hazy and kind of restricted as it might be, is still pretty amazing. Summit is right above us here, and I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty close to just phoning it in and turning around, but a through hiker passed me by and told me we're about a third of the mile from the top, and I figured so close I can I can push through the rest of that. So here we are on our way up to that structure from the fire tower. Take a quick break and then from there, changing up my plans and turning back, uh, heading back to the truck.
So again, we're at the summit of Barron and I've climbed the uh, structure of the old fire tower that was uh, installed in 1951. Uh, back then, at, uh, in prior, um, a lot of uh, main forests had fire towers to watch for wildfires and lightning strikes in the, in the sort and communicate uh, so that um, people could try to get to them, put them out. Again, you know, forestry, timber was big business, so you didn't want your product uh, burning down before you could process it. Anyway, uh, up here, you know, behind me, uh, if I can stop hitting that, there we go. But uh, anyway, from up here, I'll turn around, you can see Lake Onawa, see Borstone. Uh, I'm not sure what else. Again, it's really hazy still. Not the uh, not the clearest of days here, but uh, not bad. You put, uh, if you look out over again, I believe you can see Sebec out over there. Uh, I think again, I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, if I uh, turn and look this way behind me. I believe you can see Long Pond. Those are the second and first narrows portion of it. The uh, other part uh, is out over there and that drops down into Long Pond Stream and then into uh, Slagundi Falls. And I can't remember offhand where it goes from there. Now, I don't know if it picks up in the camera or not, but uh, roughly center third, I believe, is the Onawa Trestle. I've mentioned that in my Borstone video. Here's a different perspective of it. All right, so like I said, I, my original plan was to hike through to Cloud Pond, uh, set up camp there for the night. But again, I just, I don't feel right leaving my truck in that no parking lot. So I need to get back down there uh, and then uh, get on my way. So I'm hoping down goes quicker than up should. Uh, you also have to be careful on the descents on all that mud and on the rocks and whatnot. But uh, overall, it should be less grueling um, so that's probably it I mean it's it's an out and back if you do it the way I'm doing it um, so you have already seen everything that, uh, that I'll be passing by again so that being the case I think this may be it um, thanks for coming to the summit of Baron with me um, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I hope uh, I'll see you again in the future